Hey, welcome to our 15th lesson on the Bible. And if you look now with our new ways of our video recording, there it is on the screen, and I hope you can read it. For those who have video, you're not going to see it on the audio. But you can download or print and copy from our website. And today we're going to look at the Greek translation. And bear with us still as we work out the kinks and the bugs and everything we haven't worked out. It's only a couple days. So the Greek translations. Do we have an entire manuscript copy of the Book of Romans? In the Greek language. Older than 428 AD. That's the year 428 AD. Older than that? No. So there goes the originals. Into the garbage can. I have to figure out how to add sound. Like a sound of, you know, a garbage truck or something. Do I have the manuscript copy of the entire book of Romans dated back to the first century? A copy. Manuscript copy. Not the original. Yes. Pieced together from existing manuscript records. The Septuagint, meaning 70, which is the Roman letters LXX, and beware of words that end in X. Since the schools now impress that the Septuagint, scholars even say that Paul penned of his 14 books of the New Testament, no, not the Old Testament, of course, off the Septuagint rather than the Hebrew. So instead of Hebrew, the scholarly idiots say, he used the Septuagint. Not once does the Bible be subject to the Septuagint to give us any correct interpretation. So, scholars, you need to shut up. Because the Septuagint does not agree with the Bible. Nowhere. So, Paul did not use the Septuagint. But that's in part by seminary, which I call seminary and college teaching. So, and uh, that's in part of the seminary and college throughout America, and it would be America. I wouldn't trust anything involving God in the Bible through America. They hinge on the Septuagint. The Septuagint is related to origin and the Alexandrian school of textual criticism. Beware of the Alexandrian school. It's related to the Codex Vaticanus. You see Vatican? Warnings. <clears throat> and Codex Syndicatus. See the Sinai? That's where the law came from. The Jews reject the Septuagint. But that's not what the scholar, scholars will tell you. That's not what a lot of Christians will tell you. But they're liars. So the Septuagint does not put subject to our Bible <coughs> in the correct inter interpretation. And the Jews reject it. And they reject it because the Christians accept it. And because they were all speaking Greek. Origin had what he called the Hexpula. I'm glad I don't have to spell it no more. There it is. If you see it on the screen. Six columns and include four Greek translations. British scholars, B.F. Westcott, A.J. Hort, two names you do not want in your Bible, involved in your Bible, about your Bible. They have nothing to do with the King James Bible. On the source of finding two codex manuscripts, and again, that's Sinecaius, Sinecaius, I can't say it today, and the Codex Vaticanus. The Vaticanus, fashioned upon hearing about Sinecaius, on the foundation of this, they said, they desire a new Bible. So the Vatican came up with theirs 
because of that, we have our own. And the Vaticanus was found in a garbage can, ready to be burned. Should have been left there. Dwight Moody, D.L. Moody, was opposed about someone telling him there was going to be a new Bible. One of the greatest Greek scholars of all times studied manuscripts and was active when Westcott and Hort wrote. So this is the same time as Westcott and Hort. His name is Dean Berger. And he had zero to do with his new Bible. Amen. In detail, he viciously criticized it, the new Bible, from the pit of hell itself. Ooh. Do you know the name Dean Berger? Yep. Altogether, the manuscript evidence that cast off to produce this new English translation off the brand new Greek text is all behind with the new American standard. I wouldn't have anything to do with America and the Bible and then NIV, the new international. That is of Westcart and Hort. Mainly measured by Oregon, origin, the portion of what we call the Alexandrian school, Alexandria is in Egypt. You know what Egypt is a type of in the Bible? It's a type of the world. It has no business to be in our church. It has no business to be in our Bible. We were first called Christians at Antioch. Not Egypt. I mean, you want Egypt and Babylonia and Roman, you got Valentine's, you got Easter, you got Christmas, and you got wreaths, and you got trees, and you got bunny, and you got all kinds of crap that has come into the church. That's not Christian at all. Beware when your Bible has anything to do with Westcott and Ork, Alexandria, Codex of uh, Seneca, 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 can't say it today, I apologize. Vaticanus, Catholic, and Egypt. Beware. Now we got the new, with the New Testament, hand carp, copying, hand, handmade. Do you know that it was so severe that they changed and locked up a given book or manuscript to the pulpit. That's how precious it was. That's how limited it was. There was no online bookstore. There was no bookstore to go run down to get a copy of a Bible. You had to hand copy it, and it was so precious, they had to chain it to the pulpit. And they would only use it as they met as Christian. They didn't let the world get a hold of it. They didn't let the world tarnish it. And they would go there and they would copy down. They would copy from the, the, the book and the manuscripts that was chained. And then they would have their own personal copy as the kings were prescribed in the law. Before and after he got on his throne, he was to handwrite his own copy of the law. Now, talk about how precious the Bible would be. Instead of buying a Bible, we got a King James 1611 Bible and we hand copied our own Bible. So we can literally say at, the, at Revelation 22, not only did I read the whole Bible through, but I also handwritten my own copy. And I've heard of a few Christians who have done that. And I have heard that it has been rewarding. Why don't you do it, Styley? Because my handwriting is horrible. I've thought about it a couple times. The only use would be when they're a Christian. If you wanted to come during the week, if you wanted to come 
You have to come during the week, and you can only use that one print. You didn't take it home. There wasn't one to be copied, to have your edition at home, unless you hand copied it. Robert Stevenson, very fundamental, A.D. 1550. The Greek text was used by the King translators. Yes, there's our Bible. Elvisi Partners. Created editions in 1624, 1633, 1641. In 1633, that's when the name Texas Receptus was given to Greek text. Here's our family tree of our Bible. The King James Bible. The Western churches used Latin. And the Alexandrian school came up with their own codex. Alexandrius. Codex Syndicatus. Codex Vaticanus. Had nothing to do with it. You want Texas Receptus. And we've gone through these lessons in the 14 lessons we've done. You can go back on our webpage. You can go on my YouTube, my SoundCloud video uh, and audio, and you can get these lessons. And Lord willing, the, the future lessons. Codex, now you say, well, Stanley, what is Codex? You keep saying Codex. Codex is actually identical to our books. <coughs> when you see our books, that's what a Codex is. There are leaves, pages that were on animal skins rather than paper. About the 4th century A.D. The sheets were secured together with leather thongs. So it, it's, it looks and acts like our books. And then the Catholics again would produce the Codex Vatican Anus. I say Vatican Anus. Vatican Anus. That's what I call it. The, the, the Codex, the book that was found in the garbage can. All right, A.J. Hort, Westcott Hort, denied the deity of Jesus Christ. Your modern Bibles is on the foundation of a man who says that Jesus Christ is not God. I get 99% Jehovah Witnesses will come up with the same decree. Jesus is not God, and that is the foundation of the modern Bible movement. That's their, I don't want to say tree, but that's their dead tree. We're going to like it to Psalms chapter 1. There's a tree by the waters, and then there's the tree, that, you know, dead. You're going to take a Bible foundation from a man who denied the deity of Jesus Christ? I deal with Jehovah Witnesses about that all the time. And he was a liberal in many areas. Do you hate liberalism? Well, what about your modern Bible? But he was a Greek scholar. That's supposed to impress me. It don't. The most stupidest people I've heard were scholars. Papri evidence is older than these two manuscripts. Vaticanus and, and uh, Vaticanus. And supports... The readings of the Texas Receptus. That's our Bible line. John Wycliffe, and again, we got all this information, translated from Jerome's Latin Vulgate. That's all he had. Tyndale is the first to be printed from the Greek text, and he used one in Erasmus. Good work. But Mild Coverdale was the first English Bible to be printed. John Wycliffe translated from the Latin Vulgate, but it was never printed. The printing press was discovered in 1450, long after his death. Tyndale was a printed edition, but it was from the Greek text of Erasmus, and it was an Old Testament. The first whole Bible, New and Old Testament, to be printed is the Coverdale Bible in 1535. 
which shortly after Tyndale. No, no more hand copy. The Geneva Bible in 1550 was the first to use chapter and verse divisions. Hey, hey. Okay, open your Bible to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, verse 8. That came along with the Geneva Bible. The Geneva Bible was the Bible that came across on the Mayflower. Not the King James. By the Puritans. The King James 1611 Bible. A little work on that. We'll get more. 54 men did the work. The New American Standard Bible <laughs> was done. They wanted 54. They wanted to be like the King James Bible, but God said, no, nope, not going to do it. All 54 men checked and rechecked with each other. Less for the least, the least, the slightest mistake would ever be made. They did not want to make any human error. So, Number one man would write it, 53 men would check that word. And they did it throughout all the books of the King James Bible. They began their work in 1607 and finished in 1610. These men spent hours to day to day in prayer. What about the modern Bible? When these men saw variances in manuscripts, they would get on their knees and pray by the hour that God would direct them. And they would not move until God told them. How's your perverted version of the Bible? And the primary Greek text was A.D. 1550. It's the Texas Receptus. Now, no, Lord willing, next time, versions and translation. And I just want to thank God the Father and give the credit to Jesus Christ that we have this new way of video recording. And you don't have to look at my ugly face across the whole big screen. But now you can see what I see. And this is great, wonderful work by God.